where did you where where did where were you born and uh, in what kind of family setting uh, let, let's take it back because I think that's where relatability begins from so if we if we can start from there and and walk through this journey so that so that we we, we can begin identifying a few of those things uh, before even uh, before even your schooling just the very beginning so I'm taking note <laughs> so <clears throat> I was born in Nairobi mm -hmm. at Pumwani Maternity Hospital. Right. I was born to my mother, who was at the time a very young girl of 19. Oh, wow. Um, and she, at the time, um, was getting, sort of building up or getting into some kind of relationship with the person who I grew up knowing as my father. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that word, I chose that sentence like that. Very carefully, right. Is because the first six years of my life, um, at least as far as I knew, mm -hmm. a white person was my dad. Aha. Uh -huh. Because, you know, there's a mommy and a daddy. Right. Um, and the daddy is the person you see. And when you're six, nobody ever tells you, this is not your father and, you know, those sort of things. Right. Um, but kids are vicious. Mm -hmm. So it is kids in, you know, in the childhood who would say, this that, is... that cannot be your father. Mm. So I met my biological father when I was six years old. Okay. It, well, and this time you're still, when you're meeting him, you're in Nairobi? Yeah, we were mm -hmm. in Nairobi. Mm. Um, and that for me created an identity crisis of, of an interesting you know, perspective, because here I am, I have a biological father who is not in my life, mm -hmm. except for once a year, because my grandmother decreed that he must, once a year, I must meet him, and I must, and he must buy me my school books. Your grandma, your mom's mom? My mom's mom. Mm -hmm. um, she said that he, I must meet him once a year, and he must buy my school books. So you used to meet your, so I used your to meet biological him in dad? In January. In January. I used to meet him in general. I used At the to beginning of every pick year. up the phone. Yeah. I, I used to go to the phone booth. Yeah. Um, for you young guys, a phone booth is a thing, a telephone <laughs> that used to be on the street. <laughs> so, um, so I used to go to the, to the phone booth and I used to call his assistant or secretary. Yeah. Um, I think in those days they used to be called secretaries. Mm -hmm. um, and I would call his number and make an appointment. Mm. Um, and then on a particular day, he would come and pick me up and we'd go to textbook center. Mm -hmm. I think he used to be on Kaunda, Kaunda Street, right. if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Or Kijabe Street. I, I always confuse the two. Mm. The one that's just up the road from Capital FM. from Kij Kijabe. It's Kijabe, right. No, so no, no, Kaunda. It's Kaunda. Kijabe is much It's lower. all the way yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. So uh, on, on that one, Kijabe Street. there used Kaunda. to be two shops that were next to each other. Yeah. There used to be a textbook center, mm -hmm. which is, I think, where it started off. Mm -hmm. And next to it used to be a place called Hobby Center. Right. Oh, yeah. Mine. Right. Mm -hmm. So we go into textbook center with a list from school. School. And uh, pick up all the things yeah. that were, were, were required. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we would go to Hobby Center. Mm -hmm. And this man did one thing for me, mm. is that he made sure that I had books of every kind that I ever wanted. So I was a very wealthy child mm. because I had toys, mm. a lot of toys. And books. And I had a lot of books. Right. So I had books like, um, I had every Hardy Boys that has ever been written. Mm. I had every Famous Five, Secret Seven. All the comics and all uh, the... Tintin, Bino. Oh man. I had, I was like, the bazoo where no your channel then was, <laughs> i mean that was that was a lot of nice exposure right <laughs> um but then you see my my mother at the time had started working um so we my mother is my mother moved to malindi okay to start off her career you you heard she you know literally she was 19 when she gave birth yeah yeah so we moved to malindi and we kind of moved, moved to malindi. with her yeah um, and at, then, what, at what age are you moving to, to Malindi? Um, I don't know that there was a... I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because for me, my life was was kind of moved around a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
there was my mother being in Malindi, there was her being in Italy, there was us being in mm. Nairobi, mm. and me needing to at some point do primary school. Mm. So with that mm. came, and and the identity crisis I was telling you yeah. at the beginning, yeah. came uh, me being a loner. Right. Because I wasn't quite fitting in with the kids in Kimathi primary yeah. school yeah. where I went. Yeah. Um, and because, and that's why I'm there. Yeah. Then when I'm in Malindi, it's yeah. a different, when I'm in elsewhere, yeah. there's a difference. So you're constantly meeting people of different cultures. Um, and you began a mobile life. I become, quite I, early. I become, uh, yeah, yeah. That, like a mobile like a movement life yeah. started early. Yeah. Um, and so for me, mm. because I was a bazoo with books, mm. I would always be found in the field at a corner. Mm. I would always be found under a tree. I would always Reading. be found under the stairs, mm. um, lost in in reading. By the time I was maybe 12, 13, I was reading Sidney Sheldon. That's amazing. I was Dope. reading Jeffrey Archer. No, that's creative. Um, I read uh, Daniel Steele those days because now it was those are, even those are my mother's serious <laughs> team books. So, I mean, those are late team books. You're not <laughs> supposed to be even exposed to those. I, exactly. So for me, what would happen is that now because I had gone through all my, my books yeah. um, and now I, I needed more. So I take my mother's books. <laughs> and I, I remember Jeffrey Archer has written some some amazing books and they're big um, and I would read them in like three days four days I'm done I'm looking for another story to tell um, by the time I was I think 14 I discovered this guy called Walter Rodney who wrote how Europe underdeveloped Africa oh man <laughs> because and I read the book because I had nothing else to read at the time um, Wow! and it's in that kind of desperation right mm. so um, Primary life, primary school, where you know, yeah. which is where I met you, right? Um, was in Kimathi Primary School. Mm. I don't have very many memories of Kimathi Primary School. Mm. Um, I remember that I used to have to walk to Kimathi. You lived in the neighborhood. I lived. I lived. We lived um, in at one point Harambe Estate. Okay, not so far. Yeah. yeah. So I used to walk. Um, for the Islanders in the room, they know this this route well. You come to Uhuru, yeah, and then you come all the way to Jerusa, Jerusa, then and then you cross, cross, to, yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of kids from Kimati. and those days we just used to walk. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we didn't. Yeah, we, yeah. There was no this thing about kids being dropped in school. No, I mean, we no. used to walk. That's 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 new. Yeah, <laughs> it's new and novel. <laughs> so the things that I remember the most about Kimathi are there's a, a teacher called Mr. Kanye. Oh. Um, we pay tribute to you, sir. I, I, slaps. I, I rem- <laughs> we pay tribute to his slaps. We remember the violence. Yes. <laughs> um, I remember that he would slap you until the back of your head, like he would yeah. cover you with his massive hand. Yeah. Um, for any any reason. Yeah. You know, I remember he used to go, and yeah. then he'd slap you. Yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. He um, was the Mister Disciplinarian. I remember Mrs. Mumbogo. Yes. That um, was our class eight. We were in the uh, same. We were in the same class. Stream class all through P two yes, and up P2, until yes. from which was kind of the middle one. Which yeah, is, I think where I've always been. We're not the know, choppies. We're not been the, the serious choppy. ones. We're not the. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really been the choppy, and yeah. I've never been over here. Yeah. Um, I was always in the in the mm. in the average, mm. um, and so I remember Mrs. Wombogo, mm. um, but most of all, mm. I remember Mrs. Njema. Oh yes. And I'll tell you why she's she. I remember her especially. I I've never seen her again. Mm. Um, and if somebody you know Mrs. knows Gemma. where she is, I'd love to see her again. Yeah. Um, but I remember her not positively. I remember her for violence. So, <laughs> this was what happened. Somehow, in my standard seven, and partly because of all this movement, that confusion. Right. Uh, I had stopped doing my homework, mm. any homework, right? Um, and had f- created a system mm. that worked for most of that year. Mm. That basically made sure that I 
I would not do the homework, mm. then I'd get into a uh, class early mm. and I'd copy mm. somebody else's homework. Mm-hmm. Um, badly, of course, because mm-hmm. they were being picked up at mm. 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. We used to arrive at 7 o'clock. In school, yeah. In school, mm. and immediately the homework was being picked. Yeah. Um, so I would figure out a way of copying. If mm. I didn't copy, then mm. I wouldn't hand my book in. Mm-hmm. Um, and somehow I would sleep. Mm. There was a... In, and because of the fact that in class I was very engaged, mm. somehow nobody noticed. Mm. Or they noticed, but they didn't say anything. Mm. Until eventually, Mrs. Gemma mm. uh, decided that she was going to do her walk around. Mm. Oh. The walk around was where she would walk, if you remember, the, the, yeah. she would walk desk by desk. Yeah, and there were many. And say, were a, a, a stream had like 42 or 40. 40 yeah. yeah. So she'd walk and say, I open your, your homework mm. books. I want to see. And she'd. You get chapwood for lines. Mm. You get bitten for that you are you didn't complete this. There's a blank page. You are dog years in your books, mm. whatever. Mm. There'd be a few spankings for you for that. Mm. Mm. When she got to me, she said, "Actually, you, I want to see all your books." Whoa, bastard! So she saw that in literally every subject, oh. I wasn't doing my homework. Oh. So what she did is that she told me go to the front. And Shika Maskio. Now, Shika Maskio, for you young ones who think that being by the stairs in the corner is a punishment. Punishment. Us guys used to have to put our hands underneath our legs like this and hold your ears with it while squatting on the ground. And for a while. And for a while. Yeah. So she kept me like that yeah. while she went through the rest. Oh. And then when she finally finished, she now got round to me. For the corporal punishment. And I was beaten for two whole periods. Oh, man. Each period was 40 minutes. Oof. So she would hold my hand like that, and she would beat and beat and beat, get tired, and beat me for getting tired. We are not doing corporal punishment anymore now. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. Um, and she beat me for two whole um, periods, mm. I remember. Mm. And then she sent me out um, to kneel um, in front of the staff room, which was um, a cement cement blocks mm. that had already had they'd worn out the ears. So you know you'd be you'd be kneeling on sh- you know sort of shards of yeah. of, of kokoto. Yeah, and that was normal in those days. You know, like. That was not something I was going to go report at home and, and say. That this happened today. It's, Men, a, this it's are, a life event. In fact, I would go there and report it and I'd be chopped at home as well if I did. You'd, you'd you know, be so added. <laughs> they'd be added. Why, why yeah. in the first place was that Exactly. Happening? And why are you embarrassing the family mm. and so on and mm. so forth? Because that was the reality of the time. And the reason I tell you this story is because how it impacted me in the future. Right. And you get, you get to see it in the future. Yeah. One, it made me hate school. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Two, it made me hate classrooms. The concept of the just... general concept of a classroom. Mm. Mm. Um, from that point, I was like, and see, I was a bit of, I mean, I was a bit of an intelligent kid. Yeah. So I was asking a few questions and I was asking, so why do we have to be in class? Yeah. Right? Yeah. From that point. Yeah. And since then, I do my homework. Mm. Kudos to Mrs. Jemma for that. Mm. I do my homework. Yeah. Um, I, I, my level of preparation, I think, just was grasped at yeah. that point. Yeah. Um, in it that, achieved. The, the, in the that violence, achieved it, yes, there was a, there was that thing of, I'm never going to be caught, off guard, again. unprepared. This, yeah. Ever. Yeah. So. Um, it affected me because of the fact that fast forward to college life, yeah, I didn't I didn't sit in a, in a university the way others did. It. Yeah, I preferred I've always preferred virtual, the, uh, virtual the correspondence yeah. uh, type learning. Yeah, um, because then I do it at my pace. Yeah, um, and I am and it's open. Yeah, and you're back to primary school. Right. So I finished that mm-hmm. um, uh, unremarkably. Mm. I don't think I was particularly remarkable, <laughs> even in how I mm. I graduated. Uh, completed in '98. Yeah, I mm-hmm. finished in that was 1998. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 
and then I 94, moved. 94, sorry. 94, that's 94, right. yeah, 94. 94. 94. <laughs> yeah. And then now I moved uh, fully yeah. um, to Malindi. Yeah. 